You don't get it, do you? YouTube Commentary It's a pretty contentious genre on YouTube. Ever since its explosion in popularity in 2016, a sour stigma has formed around the community. The community isn't seen in the best light by the greater YouTube sphere or the people who run the website itself. And we're seeing talented creators try and jump ship and do <gasps> EGADS MOVIE REVIEWS and honestly, with how badly the community has flubbed stories in the past, I can't exactly fault people for wanting to dodge the label of being a commentator. And I think that's a shame, because I think the commentary community should be respected just like any other genre, and it still has its own talented creators worth watching. And I think we're just barely beginning to see what this community is capable of creating. But that's all recent stuff. Let me take you back to when commentary was new. Back in 2017, after the explosion of talent in the years of 2015 and 2016, a period I would name the commentary renaissance, the commentary community underwent a strange period. Tons of creators were popping up and they all enjoyed a healthy amount of growth, but the genre wasn't being advanced in any real way. A lot of creators in the community adopted similar styles to one another and made videos on very similar topics at a quick pace. This awkward phase of commentaries history on YouTube gave rise to the creators that would come out during this weird period. Commentators who wouldn't put commentary on the map like Leafy or Grade A or iDubs, but wouldn't push the genre forward and develop it either, like the Rye Opinion did. It was the perfect environment for a certain YouTuber to quickly rise through the ranks and become one of the largest commentary channels of the time. This is Chubbs, otherwise known by his name Billy. He was a rising star in the commentary scene and was on his way to reaching a million subscribers after only a year and a half on YouTube. And right when he was at his height, he scammed one of his young fans, forever tainting his legacy. Join me as I walk you through the story of the time a YouTuber scammed a 12 year old. Chubbs began his YouTube career pretty early on on YouTube. He originally created a channel where he would upload small homemade videos, including one where he played GTA San Andreas, and showed him using the flying car cheat. He then made another channel dedicated to Minecraft Skyblock videos. These channels weren't met with much notoriety until he created the channel Chubbs in 2015. And in 2016, he began uploading videos consistently to this channel. He took heavy inspiration from the popular commentators of the time, particularly Leafy and Pyrocynical style of videos, even featuring CSGO gameplay in the background of some of his early videos. At first, he covered small, scattered topics, but he quickly hit his stride with the series if blank was honest. An idea lifted from BuzzFeed, ironically. In these videos, he would talk over clips of whatever YouTuber or other person he was making fun of. Each video featured his droning, static, British voice, along with some lukewarm roasts, and a healthy amount of edgy humor. Look at my face, I'm a big chinky fuck. <sighs> it was a different era. Honestly, to be frank, these videos are kind of awful, really. They are low effort, high quantity videos that were easy to make and were really just Chubbs fucking around with his mic for a short while. Despite my low opinion of these videos, however, one thing that I can say is that each entry in this series of his had simple but effective thumbnails and the gimmick of the titles was at least interesting. Plus, given how this was late 2016, back when commentary was still shiny and new, it was the perfect environment for this type of content to grow. Back then, there was an audience for this type of stuff, I guess. And while I don't see the appeal whatsoever, it ended up becoming Chubbs' big break. After these videos, however, Chubbs transitioned into more of a typical commentator of the era. He began making commentary videos based on strange or interesting videos on YouTube. Kind of similar to Leafy or Pyro, except he wouldn't target children. This is your new boyfriend. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> most of the time. He also began dabbling in commentaries touching on socio-political subjects like race. Of particular note, a channel he often targeted was BuzzFeed, as was the style of the time. That being said, was he good at making any sort of like rebuttals to these videos or offering an intellectual response? Not really. 
I mean, he made videos about BuzzFeed and that fuck hate channel in 2017, so it's not like it's hard to look better in comparison, but at the same time, his commentary doesn't really offer anything of real intellectual value. His responses to most videos is either to say something like, not all white people, or men are victims too, which really doesn't add much to the discussion, and then the rest just amount to him making crude remarks about the people in the video. I'm a modern day feminist and I've ruined the entire meaning of the fucking word. Why do I look like a fucking tampon? And what better person to tell me than the black version of Hey Arnold and some twat. Yep, that's uh, that's some insightful commentary there. Around this time, Chubbs also began forming connections with other commentary YouTubers who were on the rise as well. He began appearing in videos with YouTubers like Mimulus, Atozi, I'm Alex, and many more. One person of interest that Chubbs was affiliated with was Sky Does Minecraft, also known as Net Nobody at the time. Chubbs became friends with Net Nobody by the end of December of 2016, and in 2017, Chubbs came to the US to move into Adam's house, where he would stay rent free. Now, on its own, this arrangement isn't too bad, since Adam went on record to say he was fine with Chubbs living with him rent free, but considering what Chubbs would do going forward, it doesn't quite look so good for him. How Chubbs would conduct himself online, especially on social media like Twitter, was also interesting. He had a pretty confrontational attitude on his social media. I want to say he said offensive things? But that makes it sound like he was actually daring in his tweets he made, or stated an unpopular political opinion. But no, his tweets were more like a family guy joke, b but not like the good kind either. I think this one tweet is a good example of what I mean, where he states, <clears throat> wait, wait, hold up, I gotta do the British voice. Commentary community looks like LGBT diarrhea nowadays. It really seems like he's making a really weird backhanded observation. That'd be like if a dude walked into a room and was like, What's with all the black people in here? Like, how else am I supposed to take that? But no, it just turns out that this was just bait. And he was just tricking people. Guys, it's okay I said something pretty insensitive. I mean, look, it's just a prank, bro. The camera's over there. He was infamous for deflecting all sorts of criticism by saying, Yeah, I know my content's shit, but you can't critique it now. I don't even know what fucking accent that is. As one of my favorite quotes go, Pointing out your flaws doesn't solve them. There was also some other scattered thoughts given out by other people, but those are things I can't verify, so I won't mention them here. Instances like these, though, painted Chubbs in a dubious light, as it made him look bad in front of people that had more neutral views on him. And really, I'm not sure how good you can look when you say stuff like that to begin with. A strange aspect to Chubbs was how he voiced his disdain for CSGO gambling sites. Back in 2016, CSGO gambling was big online, with players of the game gambling real-world money in order to obtain rare weapon skins for the game Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This ultimately culminated in a situation regarding two YouTubers, T. Martin and Pro Syndicate, who went on to advertise the CSGO gambling site they co-owned without disclosing their ownership to the audience, something that's kind Kind of important, and most YouTubers, including Chubbs, called them out for this. But then in late 2017, Chubbs posted a video advertising a CSGO gambling site, as well as having his own referral code. This is because he was struggling for cash at the time, and basically sold out for a sponsor. And it's a bit hypocritical for him to shame others for advertising CSGO gambling sites to people who could potentially be minors only for him to do the same. Speaking of minors, I wonder who edited that video. Much like many other YouTubers, once they reach a large number of subscribers, Chubbs began outsourcing his work for his channel to other people. He hired people to edit videos for him, with one of the editors being important to the story of today's video. In 2017, Aiden Projects was a tiny YouTuber on YouTube, only having around 300 subscribers at the time. He was a small commentary channel at the time, with him being at the young age of 12. Since he was so young, he found himself like up to the other creators in the commentary genre, including Chubbs. Aiden had approached Chubbs and asked him if he could read some lines for him so the kid could use it in one of his videos. Chubbs agreed to this and charged the kid $150 for the work. Personally, I think charging this much for you to cameo in someone's video is pretty steep. 
I already think charging someone for something like that is pretty weird, let alone Chubbs charging this much for a minute's worth of audio, but whatever, if he wants to charge that much for audio, I suppose he has the right to set the price that high, and people have the right not to fork over the cash if they think it's too much. This is far from the worst aspect of the situation though. Aiden agrees to pay the $150 to Chubbs to do the audio. Chubbs also hires him to edit one of his videos. You might think it'd be weird for him to hire a 12 year old to edit his videos for an over 500,000 subscriber channel, but then you look at Chubbs' other videos and realize that they also look like they were edited by a young teenager barely figuring out their editing software. So I guess Aiden's work would really fit right in. Aiden edited the CSGO video I mentioned earlier and was offered 30 bucks for his work editing the video. For editing an entire 10 minute video that's kind of a lowball, it's also important to mention that the year before, Leafy had his own similar controversy surrounding the fact that he paid a guy by the name of Nick Cash $20 to edit an entire video for him. The community collectively outraged over how low it was, so to offer just 10 bucks more doesn't really look that good. And at the very least, Leafy actually paid the guy up front, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Chubbs also tried to pay for his work by giving him $150 worth of CSGO knives. No, I'm not shooting you. He tried to give him in-game currency as part of compensation. Now, it's important to mention that Chubbs had the CSGO knives left over from the sponsorship, and I get that and all, but pawning it off to someone as compensation for their work is just shady at best. Like, I still play Overwatch, and I do unironically play Fortnite, because it's actually good, don't at me. If you tried paying me in Overwatch loot boxes or V-Bucks, even if I was already gonna buy them myself, I still would think that would be pretty shady. And that's not even asking the question if Aiden even plays CSGO to begin with. Strangely, Aiden rejected both options of payment. Well, I can see why he rejected the latter, but rejecting cash payment was odd. I'm assuming he was starstruck enough to do the work for free, which, given his young age, isn't unbelievable. But I think instead of going, ah, oh, hell yeah, I think Chubbs should have taken it upon himself to pay the kid regardless as it's just the right thing to do. Regardless, Chubbs went along and didn't pay the kid, but he did keep the money for a little bit in case he wanted it the next week. As we see later though, it doesn't stay there for long, but I digress. Whatever. It hasn't gotten that bad yet. That's because things are about to go downhill real fucking fast. Chubbs then took weeks upon months without giving any update about the cameo. That's because he just didn't fucking do it. The entire time he put it off saying, Oh, I'll get it done soon, I swear, and then proceeding to procrastinate on it for weeks. Aiden also turned around in about July or so, and stated that he would have liked to have been paid for the CSGO video. Seeing as how he's young and the fact that he just dropped $150 on a YouTube cameo that still wasn't done, I can't blame him for, for, for doing this. But as it turns out, Chubbs had spent the money that he saved, so it is he couldn't be, he was dead broke and couldn't even pay the kids anyways. Instead, he later asked for more money on top of what he already owed. He tried to justify it in saying that he would be charging $200 instead, for because that's what other YouTubers charge for similar work, despite them already agreeing on $150 beforehand, and also still not having paid him for his editing. Soon, Aiden's patience would be tested, understandably so. He began talking to friends about the situation, and when Chubbs got wind of that, he yelled at Aiden saying, the fuck did I do to you? I mean, he has a point. Besides scamming Aiden, he hasn't really done anything, including the thing he said he would do. Eventually, Aiden begins to speak out publicly about the situation, with Keemstar picking up the story on Drama Alert. Keem ran the story on Drama Alert, talking about the situation, giving Aiden a shout out, and sending his channel from 300 subscribers to over 100,000. Keem also gave Aiden $200 to cover the cost. At that moment, Keem looked like the good guy. Just don't let him know about it or he'll hold Aiden's success over his head. Another YouTuber by the name of iNabber, who might be Moira from Overwatch, also made a video covering the subject, with it being important as it was an effective summary of how Chubbs scammed Aiden, all in a neat 20 minute video, with a side of drama for Garnish. There were some timeline issues with the video, which I have corrected in this video. Now that Chubbs had now officially been called out, he agreed to pay the kid everything that he owed him and promised to still do the audio clip. 
in January. Yeah, so at the time of all this going down, it was about mid-December, and Chubbs wanted to wait until the next month to in order to pay Aiden. This is because Chubbs had literally spent all of the kid's money and was left with absolutely no money to pay him back. Just, the levels of stupidity here are just... Mm. Soon the situation also became morphed into some petty Twitter drama between Aiden and Ch some of Chubbs' friends. What I find dreadfully ironic is that, despite I'm Alex earlier being fine with calling out Zaptai for being a diagnosed sociopath, something that he wasn't by the way, he was reluctant to call out Chubbs for actually scamming someone. I guess I'm Alex only calls out his friends when it's convenient for him. Also, Net Nobody said that Aiden was milking the situation for some fucking reason. He cites Aiden retweeting a meme that Aiden's own fucking friends made and said, See, he's milking it. He doesn't want to make amends. Ironically, not two days ago, Adam was telling Chubb, Come on, dude, he's only 12. You gotta pay him back. And then began to just shit on this kid and label him basically a clout chaser. The kid's 12 years old, and he's being put in the center of the drama concerning fucking adults. Like, how did this happen? This kid's a fucking 6th grader, he could be attending elementary school, and he's being called out for not handling the situation correctly, like he's a fucking seasoned PR manager. Really, with this situation, everything that could have gone wrong for Chubbs, did. He took the money, spent all of it, was dead broke until the next month, Chubbs was in a real bind, and even still, he still didn't want to record the fucking audio clip because he was stuck in LA with nothing but a laptop and a Tozy's camera. Me personally, I think I would have swallowed my pride and recorded it with the jank setup anyways. In that case, you could kind of recover a little bit and have actually done something instead of done nothing. Since he couldn't pay the kid, it was the least he could do. I mean, at the very least, you could borrow someone's blue fucking snowball, man. Bottom line of the situation is that he should have thought twice before taking the kid's money. If he couldn't get the work done, which he claimed he was going to but couldn't because he didn't have the right equipment, quote unquote, then he straight up just shouldn't have accepted the cash. At all. It's not Aiden's fault that you can't get the work done or pay him. Now, you might think that this outrage from the situation was so much that it caused Chubbs to step off his platform or something like that. And that's the reason we don't really hear from him anymore, right? Right? Well, not really. We still have three more years of history to go over, but they're really small and not really significant, so we'll blaze through it. Really, it makes sense though, I mean, despite the drama, Chubb still had the goodwill of the commentary community. Since he was in with the rest of them, his viewers supported him and to this day, people still give him support. And personally, I'm not a fan of silencing creators or deplatforming people. And the only time I feel a YouTuber should be deplatformed is when it's been proven that they've done something illegal. I would think that would be easy not to do, but other people seem to have a tough time with that part. Chilps was able to take the hit, so was he able to make a full recovery? Well, not quite. After this situation, Chubbs took a major hiatus for about 9 months or so. After his hiatus, he came back with a video announcing his return and began uploading scattered uploads from late 2018 to mid to late 2019. He tried going back to basics by bringing back his If Blank Was Honest series with his video If James Charles Was Honest. He also made a few videos poking fun at some videos, but since his upload schedule slowed down to a crawl, with him posting one video about every two months or so, Chubbs wasn't able to return to his former glory. In 2017, Chubbs was able to get more views than his subscriber count with just about every video he published. Just rapid fire, boom, 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 boom. Just multiple videos a month, each one getting over 100,000 views at minimum. But when he returned, he was only able to get 100,000 views if he was lucky. I think this was also really the time when demonetization really started to bite him in the ass. Most of the videos would get demonetized and that has a tremendous impact on the visibility of your content on YouTube. I literally mean that monetization could be the difference between 100,000 views and 10,000 views. In March of 2020, Chubbs made a video finally announcing the retirement of his channel Chubbs. He would no longer be uploading on Chubbs and instead transitioned into being a Twitch streamer with occasional uploads on his channel, Fat. 
This was until August of 2020, where he posted his last video to the Chubbs channel. The video was titled, The Overdue Truth, where Chubbs discussed the situation again, giving his thoughts after all this time. Despite the title though, the video didn't really add much to the situation that couldn't have been found in Bo Blacks' recap of the situation. Aside from correcting the proper timeline of events that is. Since then, Chubbs has faded into obscurity, and almost all of his videos have either been privated, deleted, or unlisted. Personally, what perplexes me about the case is that, despite Chubbs' reputation surviving having a large chunk of the community shit on Chubbs for scamming a 12 year old and being shitty behind closed doors, his channel wasn't around for much longer after that point. I find it strange because Chubbs still had the opportunity to keep on going on YouTube, yet he just kind of fizzled out of the YouTube scene entirely, but I suppose I can understand why that is. After all, how does series, if YouTubers were honest, work nowadays anyways? I like kids. I like kids. I like kids. I like kids. <laughs> Chubbs was truly a product of a specific era of YouTube commentary. He came onto the scene when commentary was still relatively new, and was able to climb the ranks thanks to his content, that appealed to the audience that the commentary community geared themselves towards at the time. Had Chubbs debuted earlier or later on YouTube, I don't think he would have made nearly the same impact. Plus, going forward on YouTube, the culture of the website was beginning to change. More and more, the website had been scrutinized by the mainstream media and journalists, picking apart every facet of the website, lampooning Google for allowing questionable content on a website composed entirely of user-generated content causing YouTube to contort and bend in every which way to avoid a total PR nightmare. With the rollout of the demonetization system, along with the rollout of machine learning bots, it caused more avant-garde creators like those in the commentary sphere to neuter their content to appeal to the website. Not because it's necessarily a strict rule that YouTube wants to implement, or that it's even a rule to begin with, but because now, creators have become too scared to try and dare to do anything bold. So, where are these people now? Aiden Projects' channel has grown tremendously ever since these events, with his channel now having over 800,000 subscribers as I make this video. So, I'd say he's doing just fine. Chubbs has retired from his main YouTube channel and now just streaming on Twitch with a new highlights channel. He now only gets a tiny fraction of the views he once saw as Chubbs. He has now made amends with Aiden, and the two still talk to this day. Chubbs has become more humble since his time on YouTube, and seems to have mellowed out considerably. iNabber seems to have drifted away from the core commentary community, and now makes videos on people such as Nick Akato Avocado and Gabby Hanna. Regardless, he seems to be doing quite well for himself. As for me? I had a ham sandwich. The ham was below average, but the taste of the mayo with the wheat bread really made up for it. Ever since the end of 2017, I've always thought about the situation. Ever since it went down, I found it interesting to look back on, and really, I think it's because of how strange it really is. Remember, back then, grooming allegations and shit like that were much more scarce than they are nowadays, so someone getting called out for scamming a 12 year old was impactful. Also, I think it's a great learning experience for up and comers looking to become content creators themselves, which I definitely was at the time. And I hope that studying and learning from the examples of other creators will help contribute to the longevity of this channel. And I think that's a good note to end it on. For up and coming YouTubers, the takeaway is that if you have a sizable following like Chubbs did, you should definitely pay for the work someone does for you for your channel. Even if the person doesn't want it, just giving them the money would save you much of the headache that Chubbs went through. Really, if Chubbs had just saved even a small amount of money that he got, and just did the work that Aiden had paid for, he could have saved himself from most of the outrage of the controversy. And if you're another creative, like an editor or an artist, you shouldn't work for free. There's a reason there's a meme about working for exposure in the art community. Exposure or credit doesn't mean a goddamn thing, and being upfront and wanting payment upfront saves everyone the headache. And even if you're a fan of the creator, Expecting some monetary compensation for your work should just come with the territory. I've definitely seen my fair share of artists online who will draw an entire art piece before receiving a cent of payment for commission. So I hope someone took something good from this video and this story that I've recounted. 
This story is now almost 40 years old, so there really is no battle to be fought here. No person to hate or anything like that because by now everyone's changed and moved past this. I just have found the topic interesting ever since and I hope you found it interesting too. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed it, but we aren't done yet talking about YouTubers and scams just yet. Cause Chubbs' story is far from the only story where a YouTuber has scammed someone. Not even close. But that's for next time. Until then, take care of yourself.